Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about the reaction mechanism of benzene. Now, benzene was this fellow C6H6, has this skeletal formula, and this was its structure. And the structure is important because of multiple reasons. So its reaction has some similarities with alkenes and some differences. First of all, just like alkenes, they have a pi bond system. The problem is in alkenes, it is a single localized pi bond system. In benzene, the pi bond system is delocalized. Now, because it's planar and it's delocalized, they got electrons above and below the ring. So it's very easy for it to attract electrophiles. So electrophiles are going to be easily attracted by the benzene ring. But there is much extra stability because of this benzene ring, this delocalized ring. So what you need to realize is that while electrophiles were attacking an alkene, they could be weak. For example, we could use bromine molecule as an electrophile with even induced charges. There was not much to have this behave as an electrophile with alkenes. But this on its own will not be able to attack the benzene ring here. For example, to have the benzene ring react with an electrophile like Br, it'd have to be Br fully positive, which is in fact much more unstable and a stronger electrophile than Br delta plus. This is a whole extra electron lost. So this guy is looking for electrons and this is a much more reactive form of the electrophile than Br delta plus. So here you might use bromine liquid, bromine aqueous, but here you'd have to have bromine first being make able to make Br plus, and for that we'd have to use more rigorous conditions to get Br plus, and then it can attack the benzene ring. That's one difference. Second, in alkenes, alkenes undergo addition reactions. Now, benzene, because of the ring being very stable, doesn't go undergo addition reactions. It in fact undergoes substitution reactions, because that it wants to reclaim the ring all over again. That's why the intermediate, but it make it makes a carbocation in both alkenes and benzene. The intermediate and benzene kicks out and ring becomes the ring again. So you'll realize that benzene, and we'll see this in detail, benzene undergoes substitution reactions while alkenes undergo addition reactions. Now let me show you the slide. Now here is a summary of both the reactions types. In both cases, the electrophile is bromine. In the ethene's case, it's Br molecule with partial charges, and this mechanism was seen in the AS level, where bromine attacks the carbon-carbon double bond, becomes a carbocation, and then the bromide ion comes across, and this undergoes an addition reaction. On the other hand, in benzene, you need Br plus, first of all, and even if Br comes into play, it kicks out the hydrogen that already exists on the benzene ring, to undergo a substitution reaction. What's really happening is there were six hydrogens here. One of them is replaced by a Br. So now instead of C6H6, this guy is C6H5Br. And one H is being replaced by a Br. So arenes and benzene undergo electrophilic substitution reactions while alkenes undergo electrophilic addition reactions. That's the major difference. Now, let's look at in detail what this is. Now this was just a summary to show you. Now let's look at the detail and at which this reaction takes place. All right. So this is a two-step electrophilic substitution reaction with bromine. Now let's go over the whole mechanism with a generic electrophile in multiple steps. Now in the first part, let's focus on step number one. Now the step number one was this section of the reaction in which the bromine electrophile attacks the benzene ring. Now here I've drawn all the benzene ring with all the carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms shown. And this is a generic electrophile. This could have been Br+, plus, NO2+, plus, Cl+, plus, alkyl group+, plus, all the electrophiles that are going to attack the benzene ring. And I'm using the letter E to represent them. They could be any electrophile. Now this electrophile is electron deficient. It has one or less electrons. It needs this electron to form a bond. And this benzene ring has six electrons in it. And this is highly uh, attractive towards electrophiles because the electrophiles need electrons and this is negatively charged. So the electrophile pulls the electrons away from the benzene ring. Now understand that this ring has six electrons in six pi bonds delocalized over six carbon atoms. And to make a bond with this electrophile, one of the six carbon atoms now has to make a bond with this electrophile. 
Now that will mean two things. One, that one of these four ca six carbon atoms is going to make a fourth bond. When it makes a fourth bond, it becomes tetrahedral in nature, and it loses out any hybridization, unhybridized orbital it has. So let's say it's this carbon. Now this carbon makes a fourth bond with this electrophile, like right here, it now no longer is part of the ring because all of its orbitals are now hybridized tetrahedrally. This is sp3 hybridized, tetrahedral. The remaining are still sp2 hybridized. So now the overlap is only amongst the five carbons, not the sixth one. That's one. Second, the carbon that made this bond, it needed two electrons to make this bond. One of its one was its own electron that it took from the ring, but one was had to be some other carbon's electron that it took from the ring to make this dative bond. So now the ring has instead of five electrons, but it has four electrons. Four electrons shared over five carbon atoms. Now six over six was neutral. Five electrons shared between five carbons would have been neutral, but four electrons being shared with five carbons will result in this section, this delocalization having a plus charge because there's one less electron than there should be. So this results in a carbocation being formed, but in this case the plus charge is spread over the four, five carbons because there are four electrons being shared here. Now in the second step, what will happen is that this H will have to be removed. So let's scroll down to that. Now, before we do that, I want to focus on the intermediate just a bit, just so that you can visualize this guy. It is actually six carbons in a ring, but only five having their electrons delocalized. That's the ring. This is the five carbon electrons. But this ring has only four electrons in it, over five carbons. Carbon number two, three, four, and five, and six. They're all sp2 hybridized, planar. But this carbon number one is tetrahedral now, has made four bonds. It's no longer having a p orbital as unhybridized. It's no longer part of this ring. But mind you, remember, this ring right at this stage in the intermediate has four electrons, while earlier there were six. Hence, it gets a plus charge. Then, we move on to the step number two. So what happens to this intermediate that we just saw earlier? What happens is that this ring wants to be stabilized again. Now, the way it stabilizes is if it forms itself again. So what it does is, it wants two electrons back in the ring. So the carbon that has the two electrons is this guy, who's taken it away. But instead of breaking out the carbon electrophile bond, the carbon hydrogen bond breaks. Now that bond has two electrons. And those two electrons go into the ring, breaking off this bond. Obviously this is heterolytic fission. And when this breaks off, this H is given off as H+. And both these electrons now go into the ring. What that does is, it leaves this carbon that I'm pointing at with only three bonds. So it has an unhybridized p orbital that can join back in the delocalization. And because both those electrons go back in the ring, now you have six electrons back in the ring instead of four. And now the ring has six electrons over six carbons. And the ring is now back in intact. So what's happened is, substitution has taken place because the electrophile came into the carbon and at the same carbon's H is removed as H+. plus. Why? Because the ring is a much more stable structure versus a single pi bond. So in alkenes, electrophiles do an electrophilic addition. Here they do electrophilic substitution. Now, this was with E. The same thing happens with bromine. The overall change was that one of the CHs that I saw showed you earlier is going to replace the H with a B, Br. How? Because the Br will become a Br plus. It'll come here, kick out the H. And the H plus will then combine with the other Br of this to form HBr. Now, we need to warm this with FeBr3. And the reason for that is that the FeBr3 is going to be able to get the Br2 into a Br plus ion. So, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. That is the part where this uh, catalyst is needed to convert Br2 into Br+, plus, which can then be the electrophile that substitutes the hydrogen out of it. Now, what we just saw, and this is a summary of the same exact thing we just saw, in that case that was the electrophile, now we have bromine. Same bromine ion, pulls the electrons from the ring, bonds itself to a carbon, which has four bonds. Now, and then tetrahedral, the ring is the uh, over the remaining five carbons is four electrons, so the ring gets a plus charge. And then the two electrons from the CH bond get broken and the electrons go back in the ring. The bond gets broken. The H is given off as H plus, which is then going to go on and combine with the Br minus, 
that came from BR2 because this guy came from BR plus also. The overall reaction, by the way, now this is the electrophilic substitution mechanism. Now, the overall reaction was this, that you needed a benzene to react with BR2 and you need anhydrous FeB3 catalyst. Now, FeBr3 and Br2 will give me the electrophile that I need, the Br plus one. Anhydrous means there is no water, it can't be aqueous. And you gotta heat this. And when you heat them, then only will this reaction take place. And one Br comes here, removes the H, the second H, the H it gets removed, combines with the Br to become HBr. All right? This is how you will write it in the exam. You will not show the H pluses. What you will do is you will show the benzene ring being approached by Br plus. This blue curly arrow is the movement of electrons from the ring to the Br plus. Then one of the six carbons, any one you want, is going to bond to the Br. And that carbon now will have four bonds in the intermediate. And the ring will be over five carbons and there will be a plus charge. Then the bond will break and the CH bond will break. The two electrons from that bond curly arrow into the ring. The ring will get six electrons back. The Br will be the only thing left on the carbon now. And the H is going to have as H+. Plus. Now, this would be the electrophilic substitution mechanism that you need to remember. And all the mechanisms, Bhale, would be Br+, plus over Cl+, plus, NO2+, plus, uh, that are coming up in the next few lectures, are going to have the same mechanism. And what is the mechanism? Electrophilic substitution. But... Now, that's the mechanism. What you also have to know, uh, figure out in every reaction is how do you get the electrophile? Because this doesn't exist naturally. So how did we get Br plus? We got it by reacting, by using the reagents Br2 and FeBr3. And our job is to figure out how these two now react to get Br plus. That's the last part of the video left. And now let's scroll down to see how Br2 and FeBr3 can react to give me Br plus. Okay. So here, what I have is, I have Br2, beautiful green, with all the electron lone pairs shown and the bond, approaching FeBr3. So now let me just do that. Let me bring them right here. Okay, so basically FeBr3 is what we call a halogen carrier. And the idea here is that this Fe is basically very electron deficient. It's looking for electrons. So when it comes across a Br2, what happens is that the Br2's, one of the Br2's lone pair, the one that's closer to the Fe, those lone pair gets transferred to Fe. But because they can make a dative bond, this bromine can only have one bond. So when it gives away the electron here, this bond has to break. But it also breaks heterolytically and both the electrons go to the Br that is closer to the Fe. So what happens is this bond breaks, both the electrons go to this Br, its lone pair breaks and becomes a dative bond with this Fe while this Br breaks out as Br plus. So what you end up seeing is, you end up seeing a Br plus, which was basically um, this fellow right here. And what happens with the FeBr3 is, then the other Br comes in, this one, and bonds itself right here, like that. Now, when it, this bond is this one right here. And where did these lone pairs come from? They came from these two bonds going to this, these two electrons going to the Br. So this elect lone pair is, and I'll circle that slightly so that you can tell the difference. These two came out new from the bond, but these two went to make the bond with Fe. Now this guy is actually FeBr4 minus. So what really happened was that Br2 reacted with FeBr3 to make Br plus, that was my electrophile, and the remainder became FeBr4 minus. Now, this is a catalyst. So what that means is, if it might be taking part in the reaction, but eventually this will convert itself back to FeBr3. What's really happening is this. I just showed you. There was a Br, Br. The Br closer to the Fe will do, will do another one pair here. This bond breaks. Both the electrons go here. The left Br becomes Br plus, and the right Br goes to FeBr three to become FeBr four minus. All right, and then is this electrophile that goes and attacks the benzene ring. Now, in the final 
reaction when the benzene ring is attacked by the Br and then the Br goes in and then removes the H+. The H+, lost, is then going to react with this fellow to regenerate the catalyst. How? Like this. In the final stage, the catalyst is regenerated because the proton or H+, plus made from the reaction, is going to combine with FeBr4- minus to become HBr and FeBr3. So what just happened? We had benzene that reacted with Br2. And the Br2 replaced a hydrogen on the benzene. And the extra, sorry, not hydrogen on the benzene. It replaced the hydrogen on the benzene with a Br. And the extra Br became HBr. For that, you also needed to know how it made the, the Br uh, electrophile. And that was, so you needed FeBr3 for this as the catalyst. FeBr3 will work. And what you do is you take Br2 plus FeBr3 and they react to make Br plus and FeBr4 minus. And it's this Br plus that attacked the benzene ring. Comes here, removes the H plus and becomes itself. So this becomes a bromobenzene. And the H plus lost then goes to FeBr4 minus made here to become HBr and regenerates the catalyst. Now this is one of the few electrophilic substitution reactions you will see. This is the first one, but this one I'll do in detail. And then the next lesson we'll have Cl2 come on, we'll have uh, nitrobenzene come made, and a few other reactions. But they're all follow the same pattern, which is that the electrophile is attacked is it going to attack the benzene ring and bond itself? Let me show you the mechanism one last time. What happens is that the Br plus attacks the benzene ring. The electrons go to Br, makes the carbon with the four bonds and the ring, smiley face kind of ring with a plus charge intermediate. The bond breaks, the electrons go back in the ring. From the CH bond, the Br bonds and the H is removed. That H plus then goes to FeBr4 minus to become FeBr3. And where did we get the Br plus? We got it from Br2 with FeBr3 becoming Br plus. So that's the whole process. So this happens first, then the mechanism, and then the final step. And reaction number four is your overall reaction taking place. All right, I hope this was easy enough to understand. Catch you next time, guys. Bye.